Free Media. I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. Here's what we are tracking. Democratic Representative Jasmine Crockett mocked Republicans during an MSNBC appearance yesterday, accusing them of ignoring women's rights for laundry machines. Let's watch. You know, in a time when most people are talking about Ukraine, or at least some people are talking about Ukraine, you know what we're going back to do next week? Oh, wait, I got the answer. Wait, wait, ready? The Hands Off Our Home Appliances Act, Liberty yeah. and Laundry Act, Clothes Dryers Reliability Act, and the Stop Unaffordable Dishwasher Standards. You're I'm not so joking. Smart. This is not You're a joke, so right? I was it's, ready for it's, you. <laughs> it's not a joke. I mean, but literally, I have to laugh to keep from crying because I know that they didn't knock doors and find out from their constituents or their voters that they wanted them to talk about liberty and laundry. I don't know what liberty and laundry what is. Liberty is. And laundry? I have no idea. I have no idea. But the point is, they care more about our laundry having liberty. They care more about the freedom of our refrigerators than they care about the liberty and freedom of women in this country that are dying because of their terrible failed policies when it comes to saying, you know what, we believe in small government unless it means going into a woman's uterus. Okay, first of all, no woman is dying because of whatever pro-life policy she's talking, she's talking about there. I'd like to see her cite a single mm -hmm. example, but what she's referring to in this laundry list of bills oh, is, is uh, the, the Republican House Conference's plans for Appliance Week, which were actually derailed because of Iran's strike on Israel over the weekend. They're now doing a foreign policy week. But I actually feel very strongly pro-appliance week because yeah. the Biden administration has enacted what I call a war on life's simple pleasures. I've written about this a couple of times because it makes me so angry. I'm the daughter of a plumber and we always had amazing water pressure in our home. We had toilets with great flush power and people are now being forced to install appliances in their homes that frankly don't work. You have limits on water pressure you have uh, new efficient laundry machines and dishwashers. They're trying to uh, reduce the emissions from gas stoves, which obviously renders them less effective at actually cooking your food evenly and doing a nice job for you in your kitchen. They are no longer allowing incandescent light bulbs. Now we have to have LEDs, which have all sorts of knock-on health effects and are not good for wildlife if they're put outdoors. I mean, all of these little things basically just add up to trying to make people miserable. Yes, uh, I found it very interesting that the representative is like, I have no idea what these are even about. What are the, these bills? These are bills to prevent federal regulators from doing exactly what you say, from making your life more difficult, more miserable. If people want to buy more cost, uh, more uh, energy friendly uh, appliances, they are welcome to do so. I think those should be made available in terms of not making regulation on them cumbersome either. But um, the idea that federal bureaucrats should should tell you what kind of stove you're going to have, what's the level of, of water pressure going to be used for your shower, or how much water you can have in your laundry machine. Like, the, these bills didn't get made up for no reason. They exist because federal bureaucrats, unelected, by the way, people who've just decided who are energy or environmental activists themselves have just decided on these standards, often cases, not always, but often without a clear mandate from the legislature to do so. This is, these are legislators, the people who come up with these laws saying, we are going to prevent them, prevent the bureaucrats from exercising unilateral control over decision making for the American people. And that matters to a, to a lot of, she's talking about you know, safety for women, and, and we disagree on, on abortion, but there are a lot of women, a lot of men, a lot of everyone who wants to be able to run their household the way they're going to run it without a, this level of interference. These are great bills for our legislators to, did she reference Ukraine, did I miss that? She, I think did she did reference Ukraine. Ukraine. Like what, yes. The, the average American thinks it's more important to be sending more American tax dollar assistance to Ukraine than preventing the federal government from, um, from uninstalling your dishwasher? I don't think so. No, and even over the past five years or so, I have noticed that with my laundry machine, I'm gonna go full stereotypical woman here. It used to take 40 minutes to an hour to do a load of laundry. Now, if you do a normal cycle, it is 76 minutes. You cannot tell me that that is somehow more energy efficient when you end up having to use more water in the process. I mean, it's just obviously bogus. I'm or you have to run your washing machine twice to get all the soap out of yes. it. It's unbelievable. It's a different, I don't know that it's, it's environmentally destructive or anything, but I'm having this problem with my like more energy efficient dryer 
the clothes are never dry. It takes twice you have to as run long. It, you have to run it like four times. I've, I've put it up to the highest drying setting, like yeah. like desert dry. Like the clothes will disintegrate from, <laughs> from heat to dry. My dryer's <laughs> literally on fire. Yeah, so it makes things worse. And I mean, even the idea that like some somebody running their dishwasher is going to kill the environment yeah. is obviously ridiculous. I don't even buy the idea generally that like the average American is is responsible really for climate change because of their CO two output. Well, it's the people just, yelling at us and heckling us about it are, are the ones flying, flying around, around on private, private jets to exactly uh, their environmental and, meetings. and having the largest environmental footprint. Yeah. Um, but we've seen amazing advances in technology over the past twenty years for products that maybe yeah. do reduce emissions and can end up being affordable after a ton of research and development and expanding on the market naturally. But instead, what the government is interested in doing through this energy department rulemaking is issuing these mandates that make energy unaffordable for the average American and misses out on like the three primary factors for what makes an energy source useful, which is that it needs to be cheap, it needs to be reliable, and it needs to be abundant. Wind, solar, and whatever other things they've come up with, I guess like hydrogen plants, don't meet those criteria. And so you end up basically pricing mm -hmm. people out of being able to affordably heat and cool their homes, which actually does cause people to die, by the way. And uh, on uh, on uh, solar, like some people do want to install solar panels on their on their homes, and maybe they're environmentally conscious thinking people. We should make it easier to do that. Like you shouldn't need uh, a permit or you know permission from your local zoning board or whatever. That comes up in some municipalities. I've heard from people who would like to use solar panels, how difficult the government makes it to use them on their own property. Like that's the kind of like, get the government out of the way of people freely choosing to do green things if they want. Seems like a much better use of, of, of of the government's time than um, trying to um, scare people away from the appliances they know and love. And we've seen companies like Tesla manage to innovate themselves into providing what are some of the most useful EVs. Although they get a lot of subsidies. They do get a lot of subsidies. I don't approve of that. That is true. But I mean, when you see Joe Biden give these pressers, he's always up there with Ford and Chevrolet. And these are companies that have been unable to manufacture EVs unless they have major yeah. government subsidies. And a lot of them are actually pulling back on their manufacturing of it because the market is not there for, for it. Americans don't want to buy them. They're largely tapped out of the available market for people who do want to purchase an EV. And there's all these other effects um, that people have to deal with just in terms of reliability and affordability and, and it not fitting into their daily life. And so it's all just so misguided and it's all on the altar of this sort of climate change religion that is really not backed up by the available science. Mm. All right, like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on YouTube for more free media content.